This is about a short history of parathyroid gland. A medical student in 1990, 19, uh, 1880, by name Ever Sandstock, during his medical student research program, he found some small glands in dog behind the thyroid gland. And after autopsy, he found same kind of glands in a human being. Later on, he presented in a scientific program in Sweden because he was a Swedish. And after his presentation, everybody became so bored and he was crushed by so many questions. Unfortunately, he couldn't answer. Everybody asked him, what is the kind of gla gland? What is the size of the gland? How it acts? And later on, he decided not to do any research work in his lifetime. And at the end, he ended up his life as a general medical practitioner. So friends, don't ask me difficult questions because at my this age, I cannot switch over to general medical switch over to a general medical practitioner. Unfortunately, 75% of, of the hypoparathyroidism that occur in the United States and in other parts of the world is because of some kind of surgical misadventure because of removal or destruction of the parathyroid gland. Hypocalcemia after thyroidectomy is the most common complication, as I have already said, there is 70 percent. Reported incidence of transient hypocalcemia is 3 percent to 52 percent and permanent is 0.4 percent to 13 percent. Unfortunately, uh, <coughs> these you know, data varies from center to center, from person to person, depends on the volume of the study. The traditional approach of 2D hospitalization and monitoring of serum calcium levels after surgery is still being used by many institutions worldwide because usually hypocalcemia typically occurs within 48 hours after surgery. The routine use of post-operative oral calcium with or without vitamin D supplementation has been advocated by some surgeons to minimize the incidence of hypocalcemia and shorten hospital stays. But short half-life of parathyroid hormone has led to increased interest in measuring post-operative intact parathyroid hormone as an early marker of hypocalcemia. There are variability in assays, timing of measurements, and cutoff levels in different studies. You know, a measurement of parathyroid hormone and intact parathyroid hormone makes little difference. There is no, but actually, it's, it's the latest. If we measure intact parathyroid hormone, the result is more accurate. The normal regulation of calcium in our blood stream is similar to the way a thermostat works. The body is said to have a normal amount of calcium somewhere between 8.6 to 10.3 milligram per deciliter. The parathyroid gland can be thought of a calcium thermostat of the body. Uh, this is the level of the, just I want, I want to mention one point. See, serum calcium level is 8.6 to 10.3 milligram per dl, whereas actually we are more concerned about free calcium, ionized calcium, that is 4.4 to 5.2 milligram per dl. These are very well-known issues, we all know about the symptoms. In, in case of mild hypocalcemia, patient might not manifest with any symptoms. And mild symptoms, if any occurs, muscle cramps, especially on our back and legs, dry scaly skin, brittle nails, coarse hair. Over time, hypocalcemia can cause, there is most important neurological or psychogenic symptoms, including confusion, memory problem, irritability or restlessness, depression and hallucination. Our main concern is about severe hypocalcemia because severe hypocalcemia is a medical emergency and we have to manage the case within very short time, otherwise catastrophe may happen. So what, what are those symptoms? Tingling in lips, tongue, fatigue and, uh, fatigue and or feet, Finger, sorry, uh, fingers and or feet, muscle legs, muscle spasm of the throat that make it difficult to breathe especially if the patient faces, suffers from 
unilateral focal cord paralysis. Say a patient has <coughs> confronted unilateral focal paralysis and titani. His laryngospasm will be much more than that of a normal person, than that of a person who is have who has have his both vocal cord in, in, in normal. Mm. Caesars, that is very important. M10 or rule of uh, 20. 10 to 20 milliliter, 10 percent calcium gluconate in 50 to 100 milliliter of 5 percent dextrose IV over 10 minutes. 100 milliliter of 10 percent, and, and you know, <coughs> this is this is the bolus dose. And the infusion dose is 100 milliliter of 10 percent calcium gluconate in uh, 1 liter of normal saline or 5 percent dextrose and infuse at 50 to 100 milliliter per hour. This can be replaced until the patient is asymptomatic and <coughs> later on titrate the rate of infection. Young lady and old car is always a problematic. They will put you in trouble at any time. So you have to change the technology. <coughs> Grab new technologies, new ideas, new innovations and make your life easy and render your patient best possible services. So old wife and new car is always a good choice for a good living. Thank you very much.